Well, hello there and welcome to Catholic Broadcasts. And we're happy to have uh, someone who is back with us here in the in Guyana. And so we're happy to announce that Guyana has appointed its first ever vicar for clergy. And he is Father John Passard, who is here with us today. Father John, good morning. Good morning, Joshua. So first of all, before we talk about your new job, you've been away from Guyana for six months, I, six years, I believe. What have you been doing during those times? Well, I wish it was six months. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yes, it's six years, and that's a long time. I initially left the diocese when I was called to serve as judicial vicar for the Metropolitan Tribunal of the Archdiocese of Port of Spain. Um, at the time, they didn't have anyone trained in Trinidad for that position. And so, in an arrangement with the Archbishop of Port of Spain, I left um, the Diocese of Georgetown to serve in that capacity. Not long after that, the, 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 the Metropolitan Tribunal became a uh, interdiocesan tribunal is one of the first things that the Archbishop Paul has been handed to me to do um, because of the lack of personnel for the tribunals in the various dioceses in the AEC the bishops decided they will create two interdiocesan tribunals one eastern and one western the western court um, C is in Kingston Jamaica and the eastern Antilles interdiocesan tribunal was C was in Port of Spain. So at the creation of that interdiocesan tribunal with eight dioceses in, in the jurisdiction, I was then appointed judicial vicar of that court. And so I served in the end four years as judicial vicar there. Um, initially I went for a year and then it went to two. Um, but then in 2014, while serving as judicial vicar of the court, I then was asked by the bishops of the Antilles to serve as, as general secretary for the conference of bishops. And so I was appointed in 2014 and I had a four year term, um, initially one year and then a three year. And um, so I just completed that f four year period as um, general secretary for the bishops conference in November last year and so this is my re-entry into my own diocese going coming back to where I belong so welcome back Thank so you. we would have seen and read in the Catholic standard last, last week's edition that Bishop Francis has appointed you vicar of clergy can you tell our viewers and listeners what is the responsibility of a vicar for clergy well the vicar for clergy is it's 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 where vicars are really persons who share in the governance of the diocese of the bishop the bishop is the one in charge of the diocese and he has ultimate um, responsibility for the governance of the diocese he sometimes will receive assistance in his role as the chief one who governs the diocese by appointing vicars in certain areas of responsibility you have a general vicar which is the vicar general who has overall responsibility like the bishop for the entire diocese and then you have vicars with specific duties and areas of responsibility so the vicar for clergy is not one that we have used that i'm aware of in this diocese before but basically the vicar for clergy would assist the bishop in his governance of the diocese, looking in, zeroing, if you like, on that whole area of clergy. In other words, basically um, being responsible for the well-being um, of the clergy and every aspect of the life of the clergy in the diocese, um, from, from making sure that they're properly provided for, that they're healthy, that their health issues are dealt with, to celebrations of anniversaries and birthdays and as mundane as that. So it's really kind of looking after the well-being of the clergy. And of course, if you have your clergy happy, you will get much more out of them in terms of their, their, their ministry as priests in the diocese. So that basically will be it. Okay, so if I may ask Father John, your position is vicar of clergy and uh, you are the assistant priest. Is this limited to just the assistant priest or all the clergy in the All the clergy working in the diocese okay. so that there sometimes can be 
a priest or or deacon we don't have deacons here right now but um, a priest who is a member of a religious community but is not assigned to ministry in the diocese in that sense they don't really come under my purview then but once a priest is appointed to to a ministry in the diocese of as such then they the i will be basic they will be under my responsibility then but in the same way i mean it's still looking at even for those religious priests who might not have a a, a specific appointment in the diocese but is still looking and caring for them okay. you know and it's building up the, the 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 relationship between priests so that they can work better together and so on. there's many dimensions to that whole role um, that that you hope that you could bring about the whole well-being of the clergy yes you're tuned the Catholic broadcast and we're having a conversation with a vicar of clergy father John Passard father Passard you also in the appointment last week we read that you also retain your appointment as judicial vicar yeah well did I never I never did lose that appointment if oh, you like if okay. you use that kind of language which I do like but I still remained vicar for um, judicial vicar for the diocese of Georgetown. We have a, a one court which is an interdiocesan tribunal that caters for the needs of 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 eight dioceses. So, and there is a judicial vicar. I'm no longer in that role of that court, but um, the. There is also every diocese, if they have a trained person, can be appointed as judicial vicar for that, uh, that diocese. It's really a role that the bishop, um, the, every bishop in a diocese is the judge mm -hmm. in that diocese, therefore. And, but very often, the bishop relies on his judicial vicar, who is trained in that, in canon law, in, as a church lawyer, if you like, to to deal with judicial matters. Okay. So in this diocese, I'm the judicial vicar. I'm one court with the bishop, so you can't appeal my decision to the bishop. In other words, okay. it's it's when I judge, I judge in the name of the bishop. So it's one court with the bishop. So any appeal to my decisions has to go to a higher court. Okay, okay so. Coming back to your appointment as Vicar of Clergy, how would you go about carrying all those functions? Well, one of the first things I'm going to set about, because six years, I mean, I pulled a list of all the clergy that were here when I left in 2012. And out of 35, I, the list came down to nine. Wow. So we have had a big turnover of clergy within that six period. So one of my first tasks is to try and get to know the clergy because there are many of them who have come into the diocese since I have left that I really don't know. And if I'm going to function in a role of vicar for clergy, then one of the first things I think I'll have to set myself to do is to get to know the clergy, the, 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 the priests who are serving in the diocese now. And so that's one of the first things I'm doing. Alongside of that is that I'm going to be creating files on each priest so that I have information at my fingertips. Mm -hmm. There are times when for a simple thing like, for example, applying for a priest to be a marriage officer. Apparently, it's now being asked for certain information, which back when I used to apply for priests for the diocese to serve, you didn't need certain information. Okay. Now they need like a certificate of ordination we are being asked to produce. So I would would like to create files on every priest that I have all the information available that at any given time it's needed, it's there. Um, so that's another thing that I will be working on in terms of creating the files, having for our own records and, and for history, so the archives, um, like where priests have served over the years. Very often, you know, we don't make, keep records properly. And then you look back and you said, you know, we have for one of our oldest priests at the moment is Father Bob Barrow, oh, okay. who has served for many years in this diocese in different roles and capacities. But do we have the records of that? You know, for history, we need to have. So files are important and keeping the records are important. So that's another area I'd be looking at. And of course, looking to start 
visiting the priests as I get to know them, finding out their own concerns and needs, as I said, is to make our priests so, you know, happy where they are so that they can give of themselves in the best possible way to their ministry. So I'm, 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 I'm looking to bring them together on different occasions so that we can share and build a brotherhood among the clergy because that's one of the most effective ways we can um, be of service to the people that we are called to serve. Well, thank you very much. So Father, what other responsibilities would you have in your new job? Well, I, I think alongside of that, that particular role that the bishop has asked of me, I am not being placed at the moment in parish ministry. And I think it's because the bishop is at the moment thinking he's asking me to help him in certain other things that, that he wants to get done. It's a, while our diocese is not huge in terms of numbers, we are quite a big diocese in terms of geography. And therefore, certain roles that the bishop has to perform sometimes that he is unable to do um, and that he might ask me to assist him with. A simple thing like, again, uh, the, the bishop is required to do a canonical visit of parishes throughout the diocese. Sometimes he's not able because of other commitments. Yeah. He could delegate some of that to me. So there are different things there that he would probably be asking and me to help him with in his role as bishop um, and, and therefore as, as, as being in charge of the diocese. And your brother with parish ministries and the, our office would have received quite a number of call acts and if Father John will do mass since, will preside over mass seeing that he has his new position. Can you answer that for them? Well, I have to say mass. <laughs> At the moment, um, I'm living, I'll be living in in Brigdam here at uh, the apartment that Bishop Singh used to occupy. Um, so I haven't yet moved in, but I'm going to be there. And so uh, weekday masses, I, I basically help out where they might be needed, the convents around and so on. But on weekends, I have to say mass, so wherever the need is, I'll be asked to help in a parish where there might not be a priest available for mass on a weekend. Of course, with my other responsibilities, because if I want to, for example, meet the clergy, I might decide to go up a weekend in, in Borbis or Sequibo or Santa Rosa or in different parts of the diocese. So I'm tying it in with other things that I might be asked to do. And so in, in that sense, wherever I am, but you see, and I suspect that's why Bishop has not asked me or appointed me to a parish. It allows me the freedom then to move around a little bit more. Okay. While I do, I have to admit that I will be missing parish, parish ministry. ministry. I just love parish ministry. So, yeah. Okay. So, Father John, if we can turn away, um, turn attention a little, uh, more so on the diocesan clergy, I know that some of them will be away for a while. Could you explain what this meeting is all about? Well, in fact, it, it happened at the time when I was asked to go to Trinidad in 2012. One of the, in 2012, the bishops actually met from our, the AC met here in Diana. And they had asked me then, the province of Port of Spain, if I could, um, work on bringing the, the Diocesan Priests Association back into movement. Um, Castries, the Archdiocese of Castries, that metropolitan province, was and has been meeting regularly every year for the last 30 odd years. And it was the only province that was organized. So one of the tasks that was presented to me when I went to Trinidad was to the metropolitan province of Port of Spain. I worked on it for two years and I was able to get that off the ground and then that um, diocesan um, priest association for the province of Port of Spain has been going since with now a structure with a chairman and, and secretary and so on. Um, and presently, I think last year, Monsignor Montrose is a, was elected chair of that um, association and so he's the current chairman with a secretary I think from Port of Spain. So the annual meeting of the province of Port of Spain, the Diocesan Priest uh, Association of Port of Spain, is meeting this year in Curacao, in the Diocese of Curacao, or Diocese of Williamstad, Curacao. And, um, and so that's where we're going to be heading out to. All of us are going. So Monsignor Montrose, 
Father Carl, Father Joel, Father Burke, and myself okay. are all getting. The only other diocesan priest who is not making it is Father Kitarzis. And so we are all gathering, going into Curacao for this. It's the week of the 25th of February, that week. Um, so we're going to be away from the diocese, so you're going to be short that weekend. <laughs> what are the other countries in the province? For the so the diocese is not so much countries. The diocese is in the province of Puerto Spain would be Paramaribo, Suriname, Suriname. Georgetown, Guyana, the diocese of uh, Bridgetown, Barbados, and the Diocese of Williamstad, Curacao. And the, pro the, the provincial seat is, is Port of Spain. So, Do you know how many priests will be in attendance? I haven't a clue. But, I mean, we have something like over... If we actually count the diocesan priests that we have, we would have well over 100. Oh, wow. Between um, Trinidad and, and Williamstad, or the Spin and Williams side have quite a significant number. Um, there, there's something like over 30 diocesan priests in the Diocese of Williamstad, here or so. And Trinidad has well over, I would say, well over 50. So it's a lot of priests yeah. gathering for the annual conference. Yeah. But I don't know how many will make it, you know. So I do encourage you to keep our diocese and clergy in your prayers as they prepare to attend their annual conference. Father John, we thank you very much for taking time off of your busy schedule to be with us and we congratulate you on your recent appointment. We do wish you all the best and Father John is home, home to stay, and you'll be seeing and hearing more from him in time to come. Thank you. Thank you, Father.